So once again, uh, many thanks for organizers really to allow me to share uh, environment and atmosphere with all of you. It was really a great time. And also to share a few points uh, about those uh, topics you can see on the slide. And uh, with that, uh, uh, I try to split these few slides uh, around those topics. And uh, I would start with uh, one presentation uh, made by by a lady, maybe some of you know, Kodrina Maria Ilie. She is very strong, uh, let's say, fighter on behalf of OSGO community. And she had this presentation, uh, I think, three years ago uh, on the Inspire conference. And uh, she was actually trying to explain the uh, whole ecosystem of OSGOs uh, and uh, the relation of the of the of this let's say technology stack with the uh, Inspire itself and she actually raised a quite inst interesting uh, question whether whether there, there might uh, work this kind of relationship between the OSGO stack and of course uh, we are on the Q uh, GIS conference today and uh, with that I'd like to give you some some hints uh, where where we found the uh, importance of this tool uh, here in Slovakia in the domain of uh, Inspire and uh, uh, spatial data infrastructures. Uh, I shall introduce myself. Uh, I'm Martin Tuchynia. I'm actually uh, currently working on uh, Ministry of Environment, which is public sector body, and mainly I'm trying to uh, somehow support. Uh, publishing and harmoni harmonizing the geospatial data across the country, uh, mainly for the environmental purposes. And with that, uh, this presentation will be more about uh, our experience uh, with this effort and relationship to the uh, QGIS. So why QGIS? Uh, there are, I would say, three main drivers. Uh, I would took them from the global to really uh, national perspective. Uh, we understood that QGIS is a very important tool to allow uh, users uh, and also providers to interact with the geospatial content. And uh, also it's important tool for the, for the initiatives like the INSPIRE and the SDI. And it's also important to mention that despite of this community effort, which is behind the, the QGIS, uh, there are some other drivers also from outside who are trying to support, uh, stimulate the, the further progress of the, of the tool itself, like the one mentioned here under the, let's say, uh, governance of the European Commission, especially a joint research center. There was dedicated uh, uh, maintenance and implementation group uh, technical activity under that label and uh, if I'm sure uh, you will have uh, interest you can check the link behind there is documentation of uh, various tools and uh, outcomes these experts across the euro were trying to deliver to really support the usage of the of the QGIS for the harmonized uh, spatial data sharing but uh, it's also important to mention perspective uh, from Slovakia. Uh, we are trying to somehow, apologies, there will be few slides in Slovakia, but I'll try to give you the, the, the context and message why I try to pick up those uh, slides. Uh, these are examples of interaction with the stakeholders. We are trying, based on our capacities, uh, mm, uh, to undertake uh, and first one was really indicating uh, what, what are those uh, stakeholders uh, using the QGIS. And uh, of course, as we are someone who, who shall stimulate the public sector, the majority of them were coming from public sector, but there are also some representatives from, uh, uh, from uh, private sector, from R&D education and also NGO. Actually, NGO, there is no one, but from the public uh, public citizens. So you see everybody is using the QGIS. And uh, for us, it was also uh, important to, to see what are their experiences with uh, QGIS. 
And the majority, of course, this is some sort of uh, statistical example, but it can give you indicate what is the experience of those users. And majority of them seems that they, they use QGIS occasionally, so from time to time. But the, the second group was really active users, and we had also some, some really newbies and beginners. Uh, and those are really those uh, we are trying to somehow stimulate and motivate. So, so we organized some trainings and uh, sessions, and it was very nice to see that, uh, for example, after the first uh, iteration of the, of the QGIS training, uh, we got very supportive feedback. So they, they said that it really looks promising. So, so they indicated to us that they will, they will uh, definitely have a look on the, on the tool itself. Of course, there are some which will need more time. The, there were some which were uh, not uh, participating on those trainings. But, uh, but it's, uh, it's important uh, message to say that if you want to support the usage of the tool, you really have to communicate with the stakeholders, with the, with the community itself. Because there is a lot of people who are still not aware about the potential of the tool. And, uh, it's, uh, it's great if you create some sort of op opportunities, even like this conference, where they can get the hands-on and to actually understand the potential and the uh, benefits of the, of the software. What's also important uh, to somehow uh, uh, highlight is that uh, there are, of course, some expectations. Everybody, of course, wants the, to have a software which is... Uh, in the shortest way, helping us to solve what we need to solve. And, uh, but it's also important to be aware that there are different perspectives. Uh, some, some expectation comes from the, let's say, data producer sites, but there might be different priorities from the user sites. So we were also trying to collect these, these aspects, which might be also hopefully meaningful for those who, who are priori prioritizing on behalf of the QGIS, what might be the, the, the future developments where, where are really the, the needs which may be prioritized and put, uh, for example, to the, to, to, to the highest priority to, to focus on those aspects. I'm not going to read them, but, but uh, you see what, uh, what we understood are really key, key messages which, which shall be brought in the, mi in the mind for the, for the future. Uh, what... Uh, uh, I mentioned these two uh, abbreviations. May I just ask you, wondering if you could just raise your hand uh, who is aware of what those, those uh, shortcut means? J just for curiosity, how to deep go there? Okay, so, so uh, I would say it's uh, lower half of the, of the room. So in principle, INSPIRE, stands for Infrastructure for Spatial Information in the Europe. And this is a legal, uh, legally driven initiative aiming to make sure that across the Europe there will be some uh, established legally binding standards forcing public sector uh, authorities to share geospatial data in a harmonized way under the, some sort of interoperable rules. And the concept of SDI is much wider. Uh, it's spatial data infrastructure. So SDI is more used on the global level, whilst the INSPIRE is used, uh, let's say, in the European context. And it's important to mention that INSPIRE is built on the SDIs of the member states. So it means uh, those who are uh, here from the Europe, uh, most of your country, uh, shall be, countries should be represented in, the, in this European picture. The, our role is to make sure that on behalf of Slovakia, these legal obligations are fulfilled. But what I'd like to highlight is that uh, aside of these legal obligations, we want to use this opportunity and actually to, to make sure that aside we avoid some sort of uh, punishment if something is not going to, to the expected direction, actually uh, that this initiative will deliver for what it was invented. So, therefore, we are trying, aside of the communication and uh, having a website like this one, or to have some, some applications for providers, some applications for the users, we are really trying to make sure that it all makes some meaning. It, it, it actually delivers what this, uh, this infrastructure was initially designed for. 
And I have to tell you, it's not an easy task. I spent already a few years on that direction, but uh, it's, it's a long-term process. Also, INSPIRE is currently in the period when, uh, when there might be some changes, but uh, we will see uh, as, as the whole world evolves. Also, this, this tool uh, was uh, at, the, at the certain moment some pioneer effort because there were some established rules, but there were also identified some drawbacks and negative aspects which, which have to be either fixed or uh, improved towards the future. So some practical aspects about the QGIS. Uh, we had recently uh, one project, it was called ESPUS. It means some uh, sort of effective uh, spatial uh, data management, sort of. But for this conference, I'd like to pick up two, uh, two activities under this project. We, we were trying to somehow um, Focus first. Well, first one was really uh, to make sure that uh, uh, all these uh, legal obligations are fulfilled. But uh, in connection to the uh, to the QGIS, we were trying to also find out how how in practice those uh, data which are made available via services can be used by the QGIS itself. So we set up some sort of uh, testing. Uh, a testing initiative where we uh, selected 42 uh, Inspire um, spatial data sets which were, which were uh, tested through certain type of uh, uh, GIS applications. One was the web application called the National Geo Portal. And we tried to uh, test uh, view and download services. In principle, these are the two type of access to the data. One is just for uh, for, uh, for vision of the content, the second one allows you to download the dat data set to, to your site and to do whatever you need uh, to do with that um, data set. Uh, what were the outcomes? Uh, this exercise took place, I think, one year ago, more or less, maybe a few months uh, earlier. And uh, we documented everything via dedicated GitLab project, so you can have a look there. Uh, there are also some results of the tests. So there were two types of tests. First one was really for the uh, validation of the towards the INSPIRE requirements. And the second one was the usability test. So we also collected the, the errors we observed. And uh, the main outcome is here. So based on the, the results which are on the table below, uh, we can summarize that uh, for the view services was the QGIS, uh, QGIS the second best successful uh, uh, outcome of the, of the test, and for the downloadable services was the winner, definitely. Of course, each solution uh, had uh, its, uh, let's say, pros and cons, but uh, yeah, it was an interesting experience, and for us, the main uh, importance of this test was that at a uh, certain uh, time, we managed to run all those tests through all those uh, tools, so we have certain timestamp. We can uh, later on uh, came back to those services, uh, run the test again, and interact with the data providers and point out, look, something is getting better, something is getting worse, please make sure that your services are up and running and they are fulfilling all the requirements, so there will be Inspire valid but they are also usable via, via these uh, uh, GIS applications or a web application. Uh, the second uh, initiative we try to actually execute was set of trainings. On the end of the day, it was, I think, 25 trainings, but two of them were dedicated to the QGIS. First one was really for uh, basic topics like uh, uh, setting up the software, essential things, view, query, uh, some tip and tricks. And second uh, training was really, uh, let's say, more for uh, uh, advanced um, features allowing uh, with the QGIS. And we are really trying to record these uh, trainings, to, to share the slides, to interact with the participants. So it was quite interesting experience. But really, we got a very positive feedback uh, on those uh, trainings, and uh, I think it's 
it's worth to spend some time and energy on this awareness raising. Uh, so to conclude, uh, what what we really learned from that that experience, uh, uh, as any other tool, uh, using uh, of QGIS may uh, bring you some really uh, positive lesson learned. Uh, we found out that the usage is really um, very very um, satisfactory. Uh, it's, there were no problem with the installations. Uh, also, it was very well established, the support of APIs. We will see what will change in the near, let's say, future with the upcoming new OGC uh, open API services. That's something what we, we are really looking forward. And I would really like to highlight the importance of the community support. That's, that's very crucial. If you have some people who are really uh, able to to find a way how to communicate the stakeholders. We've done something from our side, but I would like to also support the, the effort of the colleagues from the Slovak QGIS community. Uh, it's very uh, important that they are supporting the questions and answers, uh, the requests on the on their um, social network channels. That gives the credibility to the tool itself. But of course, we had the challenges. I think the biggest challenge was the complexity of the INSPIRE models. Maybe those who are uh, familiar with the structure, the biggest pain uh, somewhere is the, uh, are the complex features. But it's already visible that the European Commission is trying to make these uh, very demanding requirements uh, less, uh, less uh, demanding, so they are trying to relax those requirements. And also the, the standard OGCW X uh, services uh, are facing uh, issues uh, when you have very large data sets with a huge amount of features. And of course, uh, there were also some issues with, for example, some plugins. Uh, QGIS uh, is using some plugins for uh, Inspire download services, and uh, the user interface for the plugin is not straightforward. So myself, personally, I had to I had to consult certain things with some people to make sure that I'm using that plugin in the way it was intended to, to be used. And almost finally, the outlook, what, what uh, uh, myself and colleagues, we were working on, on that ex uh, exercise, and I, I apologize to mention them on the beginning. Uh, there was quite... Uh, uh, bunch of people uh, around uh, helping us with this, that exercise is that um, on the let's say community global side, uh, it's it's really very important to make sure that uh, in the in the long term vision the 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 feature and functionality of the of the software itself probably pro probably might move from the desktop to the web. Of course, it's very ambitious. But I was very happy to see a lot of contributions during this conference going to that direction. And I think we, we have no ch chance to avoid that, uh, that uh, progress and expectations towards the future. There are also expectations on our side. Uh, we shall really continue with the, with the usage of the tool, with the making sure that there is some sort of support, some, some activities uh, as a follow-up of those trainings. And uh, where possible, despite of the situation we are currently also as a country, we shall try to contribute with the support of the community. And really to conclude and to take some, some takeaway, I would come back to Kodrina formula. After our, our experience, I would say that this, uh, uh, this relationship is uh, really not 100% love. But I think it's uh, it's going to that direction. So, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it's it, we have to be realistic. But uh, to our really experience, um, the tool itself is uh, well mature, and and is really fitting a lot of uh, expectations. But there is still a long way to go. And and uh, thanks also for your support to making this happen and uh, 
uh, of course, uh, happy to, um, to, to discuss with you any, any experience you observed in the direction. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Martin. Nice presentation. Does anyone have a question? No one? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.